بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد رحمة العالمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We invoke him to send his peace and blessings upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his companions, his family and those who follow him until the end of time Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh I've been asked to talk about the character of Al-Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and something very difficult as one poet said فَأَنَّ فَضْلُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ لَيْسَ لَوْ حَدٌ يُعْرِبُهُ بِهِ نَاقِتُ بِفَمِي As one poet, he said that the greatness of the Prophet لَمْ يُحَدْ cannot be defined sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the point that the most eloquent of Arabs would not be able to express the true greatness of the Prophet with any of their prose or poetry. And I appreciate what uh, a Sheikh Imam Wissam Sharif, who said something really profound. And just as a side note, you know, they say that 1990 to 94 was the golden age of hip hop. Now, I think in our community, if you look at the profound quality of orators that we have from Sheikh Omar to Sheikh Wissam to Yasmin Mujahid to Yasser Qadi to all these great people, I think maybe we're witnessing a golden era of the great speakers in this Ummah in America. And I say that very sincerely. I remember when I was young, you would just go to Siraj Wahaj or Sheikh Jamal Badawi with all respect to everyone else. The parallel sessions were, you know, as empty as the jerseys being sold in Philly right now. And, sorry. And now, when you're at a conference like this, you, you have a choice, right? Every speech is being, you know, it's, it's kind of like the big three. Everywhere you go, there's a good player. Is a talented person. And we should make dua that we are able to benefit from these people. And that what they say and what they teach us will not only motivate us, but transform our lives. And the reason I say that is I start this talk about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the statement of Azir Deen Abdul Salam Rahimahullah, who said, if you want to know the greatness of the Prophet, peace be upon him, then know that every good thing you see in the Ummah is merely a drop from the Bahar of Muhammad وسلم, from the ocean of the Prophet. So Sheikh Abdul Nasser, Sheikh Omar, Brother Akh Karim, Wissam Sharif, all of the khair we see in the Ummah, sisters coming back to Allah, youth repenting to Allah, people crying and coming back to Allah, raising our ch children when they read the Quran to us. All of this is simply a reflection of Al-Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the best place to start is what we Sam uh, a Sheikh, he said this morning, is let, let's let the Quran talk about the Prophet. We will allow Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to qualify his greatness. And Allah begins by saying, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Now, I talked about this earlier, and for some of you in Boston, some of this may be a rerun, but reruns come with responsibilities. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He uses the word Allah. Allah can only be used for something tangible. This is Allah, this. But here Allah says, Allah khuluqin. And khuluq is character, and character is an intangible. And here it is used. As Abu Saudi mentioned in his tafsir, Yufiru Tumakkun, because it shows absolute excellence and control. So that you describe the Prophet وسلم, in mastering an intangible, although it's a tangible. And that's why Allah says, Ala khuluqin, as though if khuluq was a structure, on the top of that structure, the summit of good character would be Muhammad Now the last portions of the Quran, we find certain universals which illustrate certain principles that we hold dear as Muslims. The uniqueness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His oneness, Tawheed of Allah. 
drawing nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the soul and its states. I enjoy being on the front lines. Of struggling in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But something that we might miss is that from starting from Surah Al-Duha all the way to the end of the Quran, we find praises and acknowledgement of the noble stature of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, بَعْدَ أَوْذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانُ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَالضُّحَى وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala swears by the dawn, the duha time of the sun right after dawn and the night as it settles. مَا وَدَّعَكَ your Lord has not left you. And here the kaf mukhatab is mentioned. Ka, you Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ma wa da'aka, your Lord has not left you. Wa ma qala. Ibn Marik said, wa ba'du fal fi'lu ma yuhkim tasarrufahu ya huzmin al-lughat al-abwaba wa subula. Don't worry about that, but that's for special audience members only. But he says, wa ma qala. The word qala is a verb that demands an object. It's fi'l muta'addi. But you don't see an object because what does qala mean? Qala means to what? To hate. And who's the subject of this verb? Is your Lord. And who would be the object of that verb if it was there? Who? The Prophet, but Allah will never say he hates the Prophet and that's why it's not mentioned. In the next chapter, Did we not expand your chest for you? One of my teachers from Pakistan, he was from Lahore. Many, many years ago, about 16 years ago, Hafiz Abdurrahman. He told me, if you want to know the greatness of the Prophet Remember that Musa, he said, Rabbi Shrahli Sadri. My Lord, expand my chest for me. But with Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah said, Alam nashrah laka sadrak. Bila tarab. Allah expanded his chest, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The next chapter is what? Surah Tateen. And at the end, we understand that Badad Amin is Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and it's saying that his sharia is Khalida. His sharia will last forever. The next chapter, Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Read in the name of your Lord. Arra'ahu staghna. And know that your enemies will not harm you. We see at least five or six virtues of the Prophet in this surah. The next chapter, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. Indeed, we sent it on the night of qadr. And if we take the opinion that Qadr means honor, a sense of honor, and we couple it with the fact that if you think deeply, as Allama Iqbal, he said, Rahimahullah, if you want to understand the Quran, understand it as you are a Sahabi, as though you've never heard it before. That is something fresh and new to you. So Allah didn't say, Inna anzalna Qur'ana. He said, Inna anzalna hu. Indeed, we sent it. It's very rare in the Arabic language to start with a pronoun. It. Or that thing. But it's done here. Why? Because the Quran was so lofty in the hearts of the Sahaba. And they knew it so well that Allah didn't have to say we sent the Quran. And by default, if the book is honorable, then the one who received it is honorable. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The next chapter. لَمْ يَكُونِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ مُنْفَكِّينَ حَتَّى تَأْتِيَهُمُ بَيِّنَا Bayina is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Bayina is a sifa that's why it has Tamar Buta at the end of it and what it's describing is not mentioned and this is done in Arabic for two reasons one is if something is so known you don't need to mention the noun that the adjective describes it's already known like if I said the champs we already know I'm talking about the Celtics I hope they win, I'm going to be in trouble. Whew. Whew. Don't clap for the Celtics, man. Clap for the Prophet or something, not sports. You know, we're just having fun. Sports, no one should come. Make dua for my team. Are you insane? 
Did you see what happened to people in Syria yesterday? We're making dua for sports. So Allah said, Al Bayina. As though the clear proof is so obvious, it's so wadiha, I don't even have to mention who it's talking about. Because the only person who meets those qualifications is Hadha al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And at the end of the chapter, Khairu Bari'ah, that the best human beings, and Allah is talking about Atba'uhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the followers of the Prophet. So if the farra, the branch is honored, then the asl is honored also, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The next chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, Whoever does the Adam's weight of good will see it. And that's for the believer who believes in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Surah Al-Adiyat, Allah compares the ummah of the Prophet to steeds. And how they will be shakirin to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not kunud. In the next chapter, Al-Qari'ah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, That that person the hereafter will be in a state of bliss only with the Prophet. As one person said, You are the door to Allah and no one can enter to Allah except their Iman and you. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Surah Al-Asr. Imam Al-Razi said, Asr is the time period of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Ibn Qayyim said, when Allah swears by something is to illustrate its profound importance. But Al-Razi adds something to it which is absolutely remarkable and, and reflects his genius. He said, if you think about it, in the Quran, Allah swore by the face of the Prophet, He swore by the heart of the Prophet, He swore by the Asr of the Prophet, and in fact He said, Bika. And Bika means by you. And we're going to talk about why he didn't say be Nabi, I'll be Rasuli. By my prophet or my messenger. He said Bika. By you, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said this is the only human being that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qasam bihi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said this illustrates his incredible importance and status. You guys awake? It's important we're talking about our prophet. I know it's been a long day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues. He mentions that those humaza lumaza to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be put in the hellfire, his enemies. Surah Tufil illustrates the great advent of the Prophet because this happened shortly before his birth sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And his birth is so important that Anas ibn Malik said that the aqiqah for the Prophet was performed twice as related by Imam Abu Bayhaqi. Be sunned in Sahih, wa ruih an Sheikhi, an Sheikhi, an Sheikhi, hatta Rasulillahi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam aqa an nasihi bil Medina. That he, as an, a grown man, made the aqiqa again for himself, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, to show the greatness and value of that year that he was born, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. As Allah says, wa thakirhum bi ayamila. Let's leave away the controversial. I know what you're thinking. Let's not think that way. Let's just chill. Quraysh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the greatness of the house that the Prophet will restore, the Kaaba. In the next chapter, Surah Ma'un, Allah chastises those who act differently than the character of the Prophet, and that's why it's just opposed to the sword that comes after it. In Surah Ma'un, we see people who are Bukhala, people who do not pray properly, people who have riya, and people who don't pray zakah. But in the next chapter of Sultan Kawthar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that we gave you Kawthar Fawal from Kathir or Kathra, which means the opposite of Bakhil. So it's the opposite of being a miser that's found in the chapter before it. Secondly, Fasalli, pray. And that's the opposite of Sahun. Li Rabbik is the opposite of Riya. Wanhar is Zakah, is the opposite of Walam Ya'un al Ma'un, Allah. So here you see the greatness of the Prophet. And here's something I want you to understand. When Allah says, Inna a'tainak, i'ta is different than an and uti shay. Ataituhu bikada means that I gave him something because maybe I was forced to. Or maybe I liked it. But a'taitu means I gave it to him only because of tafaddulan wa karuman minni. I'ta can only happen in the face of an illa. Which means it can only happen in the face of a cause. So أَعْطَيْتُهُ دِرْهَمًا لِأَنَّهُ فَقِيرٌ I gave him a dirham because he's poor. 
أعطيته تشو لأنه من فيلادلفيا. I gave him a Kleenex because he's from Philly. It's constantly. I'm gonna give y'all a break. I actually love Doug Collins. It's constantly related to equality, a sifa. So he said, "Ata," as Imam Ibn Mandur he mentions, is always related to the recipient having certain qualities. So the Prophet said, "Allah wa sallam," and this is gonna blow your mind, metaphorically, of course. And that is when trying to summarize the fadl of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that caused Allah subhanahu wa taala, because Allah is above all causes, of course, but brought about Allah's benevolence to him sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There was not just one quality that demanded this reality. So Allah didn't say, "Inna a'tay nabiyyana." Our Rasulana, because these are certain attributes of the Prophet, as Imam Al Qarafi mentioned, twelve different realities that the Prophet played as a Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But Allah subhanahu wa taala out of His tafaddul, He said, "What has brought about this benevolence is not the fact that you're a Prophet, not the fact that you're a messenger of God, not the fact that you're a great husband, not the fact that you're a general, not the fact that you're a daya, but the fact." That you are Muhammad, and that's why it's kaf. Because the demir muhatab means that when you say you, that implies, as said in Arabic now, every essence of you has brought about this ita from Allah to you, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And that's why now you can understand Razi's incredible statement about bika. I swear by your entirety. Isn't this incredible? Our Prophet Subhanallah. And the next chapter, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Qul ya ayyuhal kafirun." If you want to know the greatness of the Prophet, how we should feel proud to be in Dawa. One time, I was traveling with a teacher. We were invited to a conference, which is not like this. This is in really incredible. It was very difficult. They didn't pick us up from the airport. It had like Twinkies and old like you know Capri Sun in the fridge and stuff. It was gangster, man. And I was still young and hot blooded. You know, I didn't need Red Bull. Then Red Bull needed me. And I said to the sheikh, I said, Sheikh, man, this sucks, man. Parents, forgive me. And he was like, What'd you just say? I said, It, it's nefarious. <laughs> and he said, You are on khutawat habibillah. You are on the footsteps of the Prophet and Dawah. How could anyone complain about that? How could anyone complain to be a Dawah? He said, "Be samaqut." It's the worst thing you ever said. And he said, "You're like those who they sold their deen be thaman in bakhs." I said, "It's true, Allah. May Allah forgive me." He said, "May Allah forgive you." You should never complain if you're in a position of Dawah, because when you're in a position of Dawah, Allah has put you in the place of the Ambiya. And the Prophet said, "Antum shuhada ullahi fil ard." In Sahih Muslim, the Prophet said to his Ummah, "You are the witnesses to Allah and this earth." And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam left this legacy to you. But ligu anni walau ayah. But if you want to know the greatness of the Prophet, you feel scared when you're on the train because you got hijab and someone's looking at you. Oh God, you know, maybe I can show a ponytail or something. You know, like you'll think I'm normal. You know, your name is Muhammad and you erase it. Out for the Three Stooges, Mo. Yeah, my name's Mo. Right, Mo. You really talk like that? Yeah, well, yeah, I do. Right? You get nervous. People come and ask us sometimes about the dean. Maybe in college, in the class, we get nervous on campus. We're asked to go sit at a booth for young Muslims. We get nervous. If you want to know the greatness of the Prophet, think about the story of Fir'aun. When Allah Subhanahu wa Taala asked Musa to go to Fir'aun. He said, "Give me my give me my brother." Then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Idhaba ila Fir'aun." Both of you go to Fir'aun. "Qala Rabbana, O oh our Lord, we we fear. You flat alayna wa yatqa that He will harm us or transgress our rights." "Qala la taqafa." Allah says, "Don't be scared. Inni ma'akum asma'u wa ara." I'm with you, I hear and I see. 
The ulama said, if you want to know the greatness of the Prophet ﷺ, imagine the fear of Fir'aun, uh, of Moses and Harun. Imagine the fear that they had when they were sent to one person who disbelieved and asked to speak to him, like us. Sometimes we're asked to speak to someone or someone might even ask us about Islam. Our throats get dry, our pulse rises up, we get scared. Imagine that there was a moment in the Prophet's life where he was the only believer. He was the only believer. And he understood at that moment in time that his job was not only to one person, but as Allah says, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ جَمِيعًا from Khalid bin Walid to Malcolm X, from Suhaib Rumi to Suhaib Oklahomi. The Prophet ﷺ was commissioned by his Lord to stand up in front of a world of kufr and declare, La ilaha illallah. And that's the secret behind the statement in the beginning of the chapter, Qul ya ayyuhal kafirun. If you look at the Quran, you will notice something absolutely incredible that there is a pattern. That when Allah tells the Prophet, Qul, speak, one of two things is happening. One is to teach people, Yes, Arunaka anir ruh, Qul ruhu min amri rabbi. Or secondly, that the Prophet is pushed to do something that we would consider is a little bit hard, man. Qul li azwajika in to read in the hayat dunya wa zinataha. In Surah Al-Ahzab, Allah says to the Prophet, say to your wives, if you want from the, the goodness of this dunya, the beauty of this dunya, the, the beauty of this life, it's hard to say that to your wife. Just ask us. That's not easy. So Allah says, Qul, as though you know it's not coming from the Prophet. And in Surah Al-Kafirun, the nature of the Prophet Al-Amin, if you want to know his greatness, as I close, is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is said, Qul ya ayyuhal kafirun. Because the nature of the Prophet is not to speak to people that way. The nature of the Prophet is to speak well, to speak softly, to speak firmly, to speak in a way, وَقُلْ فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ قَوْلًا بَلِيغًا That touches the people's hearts. This Prophet who said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَصْمُتْ this Prophet who received the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, كَشَجَرَةٍ طَيِّبَةٍ That good words are like a solid, beautiful tree. The Prophet sallallahu it's not his nature to come to someone and be hard like that. Yo, what's up, man? So when Allah says, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ The ulama of tafsir said, we understand from this, that when the Quraysh heard that, Cool. They knew that the Prophet was ma'murun bi shay. That the Prophet was ordered with something because his character and his nature was not to go hard on people. And also, la a'buru wa ma ana abidun shows that the Prophet never committed shirk, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the next chapter mentions afwaja that people are going to enter into Islam because of him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the next chapter is taqsis of the am of Surah Kafirun that of all of the kuffar who can hurt you the most, the biggest trial will come from your family. Now we just touched the surface, but what I will leave you with is something very simple. After hearing. What Allah has said about our blessed Prophet وسلم, who so many generations have come to Islam. I am Muslim because of Muhammad وسلم, that Allah sent him والسلام, to be a hadi to the right path. And the greatness that we have achieved after our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala in any sphere of our life as Muslims is due to the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet said, Man dalla ala khayrin falahu ajru mithlu fa'ili. Whoever guides to something good, whoever follows them, they share in that reward. So Isaiah Din Abdul Salam said, Every ummati of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who does good, the ajr will go back to Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's why the Prophet said, half of paradise will be from my followers. 
half of those people will be explicit or implicit beneficiaries of the teachings of the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is your Prophet. And as I close, I will say this that our responsibility in light of that is a great responsibility. They say that in basketball, I, was, I used to play ball, and Siraj Wahaj will soon learn. I might not actually be here for that. I might skip town. But I remember when we would be down and one of our players would step it up and lead by example, it would cause everyone else on the team to be better. And we have some cool word for that in educational psychology, which I forgot, along with Erickson and Piaget. But what does it say about our team now, who our captain is Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who never lets us down, who constantly performed at the best level? Should that also cause us to rise up and perform more responsibly? And as I close, I'll mention a few things. Number one, that the Prophet sallallahu was concerned for us. And all of those incredible qualities he had, he was coupling that with humility. They say talent is beautiful, but talent with humility is a treasure. That when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam read, in Nahun, adlalna kathira min an nas, and when he read, in tu'adhibahum fa innahum ibaduk, as related in the hadith of Anas ibn Malik from Bukhari, Abu Dawood, and Imam Ahmed, be sanad sahih. That the Prophet and he said, the first thing he said, Allahumma ummati. Allahumma ummati. And the word Allahumma, as Al-Alama ibn Qayyim, he mentioned Jalal al-Afham, means that you are invoking Allah by every single name and attribute of His that you know and you don't know. So the Prophet invoked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by all of these names and attributes, and the first thing that came out of His lips was you, Ummati, my nation. To the point that the hadith continues that Jibreel came to the Prophet and said to him, what's wrong? And then he said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commissioned me to relate to you sunradika fi ummatik we will please you with your ummah wala nasuk and you will never be sad regarding them the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the night of isra and mi'raj as the samarqandi mentions in tanbihul muqtanin when he reached that high state above sidratul muntaha and he spoke to his lord at-tahiyatu lillahi was salawatu wa tayyibat and Allah responded to him, As-salamu alayka ayyuhan nabiyyu wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. My shaykh told me, at that moment the conversation was over with. But at that moment the Prophet remembered someone else. So he added, and here in subhanAllah, and I hope you take a bayina course because they'll break this down for you. He added to it without using waw al -atf. He didn't say, wassalamu alayna. He said, assalamu alayna. At that moment of success, at that moment of accomplishment, he remembered you. If the prophet could remember you in the good times, why can we not remember him in the bad times? If the prophet could remember us with Allah, why can't we remember the prophet when we're with shaitan? And that's an important lesson. That at the end of the day, don't be a crybaby. Oh, I'm not good. Oh, you know, my mama burned the samosas when I was little. Oh, this. Oh, that. Stop crying. Your prophet is Muhammad, Aki. I don't know. I might take it off because I'm never going to get married. I'm, tw I'm, I'm so old. I'm 23. <laughs> Sister, your prophet is Muhammad. Your shelf life is not dictated by human beings. Because you live for something higher than this dunya in the first place. I don't need the claps. No problem. Just say alhamdulillah. That works as well. Hallelujah. It's good. But in hard times, in difficult times, if the Prophet remembered us in good times, 
we should remember him in bad times. And remember that that's your captain. That's who's running the triangle on Shaitan. The second, as I finish, is that we have a responsibility to be ethical people. Because our prophet was a prophet of ethics. All of the knowledge in the world, all of the thobes and beards in the world, and the, per the thobe came from Persia anyways. The prophet didn't wear that long thobe, man. He wore a shawar kameez, B. Thobe came from Persia 300 years later, but it still looks fresh. I I'll wear it too. But the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, innama bu'ithtu. I was sent only to complete morality, noble morality. So all the beards and the thobes and the tesbees and the Sufi cloak and all that, that's all fashion. That's all fashion. Niqab, hijab, it's important. These are fara'id. But if they're not coupled with ethics, it could be showing off. It could be for something else. So the second point I'll make as I close is that we have to be committed to ethics. And the best book I have seen that will help in that is Riyadh al-Salihin. Everyone here today, before you go home, if you have it at home, you should start a halaqa in your house with your kids, with your wife, with your husband, with your roommates, with your friends, with your walls, because the angels will be with you if you're alone. Ibn Taymiyyah said, I'm never alone because the angels are with me. Start a halaqa with that small book. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the greatest ever. He said, Ana Sayyid al awwaleen wal akhireen, which means I'm the greatest of those who came before me and I'm the greatest of those who came after me. Wala fakhr. And he said, I didn't say that to brag sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa salamu alaykum.